Okay, guys, welcome uh, to the uh, security dev room talk uh, about application whitelisting in Linux environment by uh, Radovan Sroka. Hello, Fosden. My name is uh, Radovan Sroka, and I work as a software engineer in uh, Red Hat in Brno. And uh, I'm very excited to be here and as a speaker and as a developer. So let's talk about application whitelisting. What is an application whitelisting? <clears throat> well, it is a security practice where the application or the, soft or the software itself is uh, able to run according to its presence on the list. <clears throat> and uh, usually, uh, administrator, administrator is uh, responsible for maintaining, maintaining such a list. So. It's his choice what will be on this list. Um, why is that so, so important? Uh, well, it uh, adds another level, level of security to the system. And uh, uh, application well listing capability is a part of the many certification schemes, uh, such as common criteria and many others. <clears throat> Uh, this basically pushes software vendors to implement some sort of uh, application whitelisting uh, solution. So where is Red Hat? Well, we introduced uh, FA policy framework in uh, ROL 8.1 and Fedora 29. And it's uh, available to use for everyone. FA policy framework is a very simple and light, lightweight solution and uh, it uh, benefits from RPM and DNF integration. It has also audit support and uh, it is built upon FA Notify API. FA Notify API is a kernel API which is very similar to iNotify. Who knows? iNotify can uh, <coughs> watch uh, file system events based on system calls like open, read, write, and close. Uh, but uh, FA Notify can also watch uh, exec system calls. And uh, moreover, it's uh, blockable on system call side. That means that uh, uh, system call will be uh, paused until decision has been made on the other side. So this is very simple scenario how FA Notify can work. So we have two processes here. The first on the on the left is uh, bash, which is being watched, and it, it, it would like to run a ps command, standard uh, Linux utility, and this uh, system call is uh, <coughs> will be will be on hold. Execution of the system call will be on hold, and kernel will notify the daemon, which is the watcher in this case, uh, FA policy daemon, and it uh, sends uh, an event to this daemon, and uh, daemon, <coughs> daemon can see that uh, something is happening on the system, and we can see from the event that. Uh, Bash is going to execute PS command with uh, such as ID. <clears throat> and uh, this daemon has to decide what to do with it. Well, uh, it can send allowed, decision allowed. That means that uh, exec, exec VE will be eventually, will eventually success. On the, other, uh, on the other side, it can send, it can, uh, send uh, denied. <clears throat> and uh, that means that uh, exec v will fail and uh, bash will be not able to exec uh, ps command this is uh, how fa policy the framework architecture looks like well it has multiple backends and uh, the most sig sim significant significant part of the project is the uh, daemon itself when the daemon it starts it loads all data from uh, backends and it saves them into database and uh, then it can uh, create uh, some query 
to uh, verify trust, let's say. So, how can we configure it? FA policy D can be configured in three ways. The first one is uh, rules file. We can find there uh, the, the default set, set of rules, by, like uh, set from distribution. The second way is uh, conf configuration file for, for the daemon. We can uh, tweak some performance options there, usually. And the uh, last way how to set it is uh, FAPOECD trust file. And uh, there we can put a list of applications we trust, actually. <clears throat> so, as I said before, there are multiple op optional backends. Uh, <laughs> right now, there are two, two possibilities implemented. The first one is RPMDB, which is the backend which loads all data, all uh, data from uh, RPM database. Uh, and the second one is FAPOCD Trust file, which, as I said, uh, contains the uh, list of uh, trusted applications. And uh, when the application is trusted with the default set of rules, it will be allowed. So FAPOLICY D has its own rule language implemented, and it has uh, subject-object notation, very similar to SOINUX or uh, AUDIT. And it can be divided in, into four uh, parts, where the first is the decision. Decision is the action what uh, will be taken when uh, rule matches. And uh, it can be allow or deny. We can combine it with audit, so it also uh, the decision will be, will be audited, and we can find uh, the decision in audit logs. <clears throat> the second part of the rule is uh, permission. Permission can be uh, open or execute. That uh, comes from FA Notify API because there are two uh, two types of events there. And uh, it, it is based on uh, system call, system calls. And uh, there is also any keyboard that can match any of them. The third uh, part of the rule is subject. It's uh, part before colon, and uh, it is a process that is uh, running, and it wants to call exec, exec or open system call. And the object, the part of the, after the column, is uh, is usually file uh, that uh, is going to be executed or opened. We can install a FAPOLICD framework very easily on Fedora or RHEL. Just it's as simple as that. So let's try to run it. When we want to. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's imagine that we have some applications in uh, Home Deer, and we would like to run them, even if they are not installed from RPM. So, for example, I have uh, in my bin two applications. First, first uh, is uh, my binary, which is uh, which is uh, a normal, usual uh, compiled binary. It's, uh, it is actually copy from ls command, and the second is some Python script. So, if we run this uh, binary, it works. So let's start the, the daemon. When we run it in a debug mode, as a root, of course, and we save save the output, uh, we can try to run it again, and it is not possible because uh, this up, uh, this. Uh, particular application is not uh, trusted. <laughs> so what can we do about it? Well, we can investigate the output of the FA policy D. If we start looking for my bin, we should uh, find, find something like that, which is, uh, which says that uh, rule nine 
uh, from rules file has matched. It is some default rule that uh, denies everything, let's say. And uh, it denied this, uh, this event, which, was, uh, which had a type execute and uh, some metadata. And we can see that the, the subject is shell. It, uh, it is uh, ZSH. And the, the object is my binary. So my shell would like to execute my binary with this uh, file type as a executable. So let's try to construct a rule from that. So we want to allow this event that has permission execute with this uh, subject, which is a uh, shell. And we would like to force that shell has to be trusted, OK? That means it has to be installed from the, uh, from the, from the standard repository, let's say. And uh, there is my binary, which is, uh, which, is, which is in the path. And it has uh, this uh, file type. And we know that it is not trusted. But uh, this is optional. It, it doesn't have to be there. So if we put this rule uh, at the beginning of the rule file, then we can try to run our binary again, and we can see that it works. What about that Python script? Well, we are able to run it right now with uh, FFOCD disabled. So it's some whole world script. <coughs> If we run, again, the daemon, as before, we can see that it is not possible to run it, this Python script. So we will investigate again with the same approach. We will grab from my app, and we can see that there was an event that says, actually, it is a very similar event as before. It has the same subject, the shell. And, uh, but the object is different. It's, now it's uh, my app, and it has a different file type, which is application Python right now, or text Python. So if we construct the rule, it is also very similar rule as before. We can, we can set trust one for subject, and uh, we we should be able to run this Python application from ZSH as, as, uh, as uh, we were able to before. But we are not able to. So let's uh, start the second round of investigation. Well, if we grab again in the output of uh, FAPOECD, we will grab two lines now. The first is allowed, permission execute. So the rule we put uh, at the beginning of the rules file, it actually matched. But there, there is a second event that says we need to, it uh, needs to open this file, actually, from, from shell. So it looks like uh, shell is first, f or Part of the execution or exec, uh, exec system call is also called open system call, right? So this is the reason why is, why is that so. So if we can, we can see that these two lines are very similar, we can use any keyword for permission and uh, we can allow uh, these two events with one rule. If, you'll, if we again uh, update our rules, rules file and run the Python script, now we can see that we are able to. What's the difference between uh, t these, two ty these two ways of uh, running Python scripts? So the, on the left side, 
you can see that shell is uh, opening this Python script, on, but uh, on the right side, <coughs> it looks like Python free interpreter. Python free interpreter is running the script, right? So if we grab uh, for my app again, we can see that subject is different. <coughs> But uh, we can fix this with uh, all keyword instead of uh, exit. So we have a rule that will allow any permission and with any uh, or all uh, subjects that are trusted. And again, the object is the same as before. The second way how to enable this application is to enable whole directory. But this is not very secure, right? And the third way is uh, the best from my point of view, is to add these applications to the FA policy trust file, as you can see on the image. And we are, ab we are able to run them then. So, if you are okay with uh, our configuration, we can just simply enable the uh, FAPOCD with uh, systemd. That's all. Thanks. <laughs> Any question? How do you prevent um uh, race conditions uh, in, in the policy handling system. As oh. in, especially during boot, it might take some time before the demo that you use in order to set up the policy is uh, available. Yeah, it depends how you, uh, it depends how the unit file is written. So we can start this uh, demo very uh, uh, early or even in the early boot. All right, so, so I've got two questions. Hopefully one of them will be pretty short. So are you aware of any efforts of actually getting uh, FA policy D employed in other distributions other than uh, Red Hat based? I mean, it seems that apart from our PMDB integration, it should be, there's nothing in there that should uh, not work under non other distros. Well, uh, I, made a page last week that uh, made uh, lib RPM optional. And there is an API that uh, can be easily extended to some other trust source. So now it, it is not possible. It, you can use it just only with uh, this trust file, but you have to, mani uh, you have to maintain it. But it's, uh, it's not easy. But uh, you can imp implement some other uh, the source of the trust very easily. It, there are, I think, three functions you have to implement in C. Okay, second question. I, if I understand correctly right now, this is very much limited to identifying files to allow or deny by their location, which obviously means that <laughs> if you have got permissions to like, copy, execute files from some directory, that like you give them the home directory, all the user has to do is just copy the file to a different place. So. I suspect it might be a limitation of, uh, of the Fain Notify API, but are there any plans to actually extend this to some sort of, like, I don't know, integrity-based uh, okay. integrity uh, or hash-based policies? Uh, let me think. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we are not uh, checking the integrity. Like, we have all the hashes. We can do that. We have hashes from uh, RPM database. So theoretically, it can work. It can be implemented like with a few lines of code. But uh, we are not doing that right now because uh, uh, it, has some it has some performance impact right now. And we, we would like to like, uh, put, put, put it down. So, but uh, if you want re some real solution for that, that will uh, compute all hashes and all files. So there is an IMA, but that has like a big overhead, really. 
So the, uh, the adding the trust just confirms that the package is installed, and that's it. That's the only check that's happening. Adding trust, can, can uh, adding trust one. All that does is check if the package is installed, and it's running from that location. It doesn't do any SHA based checks. Nothing else. I just or, said that. That's what I'm. Yeah. Just clarify. Okay. Any other question? Which system calls are you preventing? Are you also preventing like P open stuff like that? Uh, we are looking for uh, like whole family of system calls, right? So all exec system calls or all open system calls, like they are watched by this API. So any other questions? Have you considered on implementing this um, uh, with with SE Linux or AppArmor's uh, style of settings instead of um, doing doing it in new? Um, what I want to say is, um, would it be possible to do exactly this with SE Linux in a special setting? Like you do not have to disallow everything with SE Linux, just like a small portion, and then allow stuff again? Or was it asked already? Because he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a like common question. Uh, well, some uh, uh, limited scope can be implemented via SE Linux, but uh, there is a problem with uh, with these labels because you have to you have to check them like all the time, and you have to uh, rely that these labels are okay. So you would technically uh, like look. Uh, would need to loop uh, restorcom or something like that, like all, all, all the time. So we would like to uh, enhance this uh, application like this thing to really check hashes and content of the file. And this is not possible with SE Linux. Because SE Linux has the label and <clears throat> but it uh, doesn't it doesn't care uh, really care about the content of the file or hash or something so one ma one one last question anyone so if no thank you for your presentation <laughs> <laughs>